welcome to another special edition of the greatest goddamn DD stream on this world than the next here. Yeah. Welcome to Goblins Under the Stairs. <laughs> you got Solrak the Destroyer coming from the city that never sleeps, which might never breathe again, baby. And of course, I got my epic crew of destroyers with me because we just couldn't wait till Sunday here. Yeah. I got Fang the Mang driving home. I got Wilmot Shanton outside his home. And of course, the greatest goddamn DND DM in all the land here. It's Nate Gonzalez. Take it away, Nate. Oh, thank you, Solar Rack the Destroyer. And yes, welcome everyone to tonight's special edition of Goblins Under the Stairs. Uh, squeeze a quick one in here tonight while we can uh, before I, I have a game to play in tonight. Um. Let's do a quick little recap. It seems like I forgot to type up the recap for you guys last time we were together. So uh, if someone else wants to do it, I'll give you inspiration. If not, we can just, uh, I'll do it real quick and we can get on with it. Don't all jump at once. Sure, I'll take inspiration. All right, go for it. All right, so uh, the last we left off, uh, Solrak was about to foolishly open a door after Wilmore beautifully told him not to do it. They go out into the hallway and there's these two umbilical cord connected just behemoths waiting there for them. Uh, fantastic Wilmore runs out, blasts, boom, boom, boom. Three big heavy ones. Solrak runs in and I mean, you know, he's swinging, you know, a letter opener. Small, small, teeny tiny cut on each of them. Not much damage done. Fang, he just kind of dances around for a little bit. And then, you know, Wilmore decides to finish it up himself. So he kind of runs back out, blasts them two or three more times. And, you know, they're dead. Everyone's high-fiving, really, really thankful for Wilmore taking care of business like he usually does. Um, as as Wilmore's walking around, Solrak, he, he, he decides to go into this the other room. And, and he sees this just beautifully manicured tapestry where he sees, you know, the royal family of Daggerford. Uh, beautiful fantastic meal he he gets a little hungry and he you know he's kind of he's kind of wondering what's next and he goes into the next one and now oh it's you know he he thinks it's debauchery he thinks it's it's just you know pools of blood it's starting to get a little hectic i mean wilmer's in the back thinks it's a party and then he goes to the next one and it is it is it is dead dead stuff on the floor piles of blood a giant beast sitting in the middle just enjoying itself really loving the hurt and the harm that's going on around it and then Solrak kind of hears a voice and he pulls that tapestry down after seeing some pure destruction in Daggerford and he sees this big beast just calling his name he uh you know he kind of thinks to himself what would Wilmore do in this situation and he just starts blasting away with his with his sword, you know, and, and cuts it clean in half. One single swipe of his sword, just how Wilmore would do it. And as as the beast falls on the ground, he's he's still a little angry guy. So he kind of walks out, pulls that uh, tapestry down, and as he walks away, he uh, Wilmore's concerned about his friend because he's the caring one in the group as well. And he, you know, he kind of asks, "What's what's going on?" and now he Thorax still got a little he's got a little crotch in his step. He's a little he's a little crouching. He goes to show it to Wilmore and 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 try as Wilmore might, he he decides to let his guard down so Solrak could feel powerful in that moment. Uh you know, and kind of lets it take over him just so his friends could could know what it's like to be victorious. And then uh and then he snapped out of it. And that's it. Wow, uh, I don't remember these uh, having so much, so much of a slant. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Very not biased uh, intro there, cool man. <laughs> That's how I experienced the last game. I don't know. I, I don't know how you guys did. <laughs> got it. Got it. Uh, uh, got it. <laughs> I love these uh, player character recaps uh, from, their, from their perspective. Um, also, you guys did uh, go up into another room where you saw a um, mausoleum or a um, a tomb for oh, yeah. another one of these trickster gods. 
a um, the the frog hemoth. And yeah, you guys fought some white or some wraiths in there, and and Fang stole a couple of precious gems and, and gold, and uh, that was pretty much it that went down in there. You guys killed the skeleton that was in there that also had a pentagon shape protruding from its head, and took and Solrak took that skull and is holding on to that as well. That's pretty much it. So with that, uh, you guys bust out of that room with the tapestries. Uh, showing the royal family of Daggerford and debauchery and chaos in their dinner hall. Uh, what would you guys like to do now? I think maybe we uh, we kind of explore further down and see if we can uh, get this show on the road a little bit. I feel like we're doing a lot of fighting. What's wrong with that here? Yeah. Well, some, some telling me there's going to be a lot more fighting, you know, at the bottom. Mm. Well, I like that. So let's go. Shall we go back to the spiral staircase or just take these lovely stairs out here? Well, if you insist <clears throat> there's going to be more fighting down well, at the uh, bottom, don't you think we're going to be... They're going to be over there. I really something? wanted to check out the staircase. Uh, on, so. oh, I'm not sure if you could hear him, Carlos, but we have Luke was talking. Oh, I couldn't. Yeah. God damn it. I <laughs> shall refresh. <laughs> All good. As I was saying, uh, <laughs> as I was saying, um, if if you insist that there's gonna be more fighting towards the bottom of the uh, of the temple, uh, don't you think that they're going? To, if there's gonna be more fighting, don't you think that they're gonna be defending something, like perhaps treasure? That is quite mm -hmm. possible. I Did think maybe he always we, uh, has his mind on the treasure. Um, something important. Something I mean, important. Maybe we can see what's you know we we are looking for that black dagger. So maybe and I kind of pull out the um. Uh, I guess it's she's in a lantern or whatever it is, mm -hmm. and to do something with this thing, uh, I give her a little shake. Um, so maybe we should, uh, you know, keep uh keep on keeping on. Yes, Shall I agree. Shall we try the spiral staircase or uh, the main I stairwell? You, I, I was hoping you'd uh, say the spiral staircase. I do like a good downward spiral. Shall we uh, go on back? Thorak, why don't you uh, show us the way? Let's go. Start walking on over the spiral staircase, which... Believe, I remember where it is. So, <laughs> so I I think it. it's, it's we gotta go. We gotta go down here, down, and through we the little down, hall. The thing. Yeah. Yep. yep. After all, you were the one that led us to this place, Sorak. Yeah, you, and, just, you yeah. and your buddy yeah. Yaka. I'm just gonna drag your guys. Feels like such a long guys. time. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, can you just drag us over through and? Yep. Is my um? Oh, no, it's just slow. I got you. So you guys uh go through that room once again, where you guys found Yaka on that pedestal and crawl through the tight crawl space, uh, looping your way back into this one room where you guys fought off a a um, tomb guardian, and you open up the door to see the spiral staircase uh, going upwards and downwards. Shall we uh, go down, I guess, gentlemen? Down the I, spiral staircase. I stop them real quick. I'm going to take a listen and smell. Yeah, go ahead and make a perception check with advantage. So slow at first. Oh. 12. Um, you don't seem to be picking anything up from where you are. Uh, seems eerily silent. I gave him a little signal. We're good to go, and I keep going down the stairs. All right. You guys continue to go on. I'm probably going to freeze. Uh, but yeah. you guys climb down these stone stairs, descending downwards. Going about... 15 feet down into the darkness. 
afraid to click you guys over. Alright, I'm having it. I believe in you. Do it! I, I did it. And then I run back up the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> We're upstairs. We're downstairs. The upstairs is now another portal to another dimension, and Wilmore is lost there. <laughs> uh, so you guys descend on downwards, and you see as you get to the bottom, Solrak, a hall that extends out to the west, and the stairs continue, continue to spiral on downwards as well. The hall to the west seems to end in an abrupt dead end. A hmm. whisper to them. Something's off about this hall. Uh, um, I'm gonna wand it. I'm gonna rot it. I'll just kind of start rotting and then just kind of walk in there a second. Yeah, when we're trying to pick up any sort of magic and whatnot, any evil, not seeming to pick anything up, but to walk on down to the end of this hall, um, do see just a, the tiniest glint of light shining through a a crack in the wall and you kind of follow it and you see that it's a slit that goes all the way up from the from the base to the ceiling kind of turn and go shall we give it a shot gentlemen i'm kind of like fiddling around to see if there's like a switch that'll open the door yeah kind let's of do look it look around for a moment and this door seems to or this wall seems to just kind of slide inwards to the retract in between <laughs> the wall Take a step or two in and see. All right. Now. Try to follow. You follow behind as Wilmore yeah. takes the door and puts his nubby fingers along the crack and slides it on open. Grinds against the stone as you guys push it on open. And within this room, on the other side, you guys can see. Um, this vaulted chamber that features a 10 foot deep sunken floor surrounded by ledges without railings that you guys begin to walk along. Um, alcoves along the ledges hold painted wooden statues of horned headed warriors, each wearing a grass skirt and clutching a spear in their hands. Um, a gruesome throne out to the west side, lashed together of bone and strips of skin, stands atop of that ledge. Um, a fearsome horned skull surmounts the throne, and a small uh, skulls are piled all around it. Uh, the seat of the throne appears to be made of stretched skin, and has a metal scepter resting on it. And shuffling about the sunken portion down that ten foot, you guys can see are three gaunt-looking humanoid figures in dusty robes, just draped in cobwebs, and their eyes and mouths stitched shut. They all have brushes and clay pots and different colored pigments that they paint the walls and pillars with these grim, poorly rendered illustrations. Can I uh, depict what, like, is it a, like the illustrations? Just like as I walk in and I see it, because I'm, I'm also kind of scared here. Yeah, go ahead and make a, a um, you can do perception. Perception yeah, I can. It's always perception. Twenty-nine. Ooh, yeah, yeah <laughs> you you see that one of the artists is is presently painting over scenes um, depicting the fall of um, some other adventurers, some heroes within the the tomb here. Uh, all that remains of what what's being painted over is an image of a, a human male. Uh, choking on poisonous gas, just kind of billowing all around him. Um, the other two artists that you can see, they're in the process of painting images that capture, uh, you know, they actually, like, you know, you look closer and kind of surprised to see this. Uh, you see there looks to be um, an image of this skull with its mouth um, chomping down with Fang's body hanging out the other side of it. You can see... Um, an image of uh, Solrak fighting against two of the um, the tomb guardians in battle. I just kind of 
slink back out of the room. Just be like, ah. and go to like <clears throat> shut the door. <laughs> just like, I, I, I think. Uh, uh uh. As he goes to shut it, I stop him. What'd you see? <clears throat> There's a. I think they're like painting the past in there. It's it's a it's a little creepy. Why don't you peek your head in? But shh. I just kind of. I uh... kind of explain to them that there's three people painting our adventure. So they've had eyes on us this entire time. I do feel there's a there's a bit of magic in here. Uh, I, we may not I, necessarily uh, have eyes. Yeah, I take a peek in there, and I see the blind dudes. And I come back out, and say, "Yeah, they definitely don't have eyes on us." <laughs> Hold on, <laughs> I got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, question is, whose throne is that? It doesn't strike me as something Narvi would use. Yeah, that, I don't think it's a throne we wanna we wanna get ourselves kind of involved in. Uh, we should maybe just finish up the spiral staircase. I'm like, I'm who's to say? Again. Who's to say whoever's throne that is isn't just waiting downstairs? Well, at least they don't have their scepter. Should we get the scepter? Scepter no, seems like it'd be something of importance. No, I think, I think it's probably, it's probably best left. Uh, are y'all not getting weird juju about this right here? There's a bunch of skulls, and I, I keep going to like shut the door. I mean, I'm just saying, me and him, and I point to Fang, we never agree on anything. And we're both leaning towards the scepter there, so. I mean, I mean we've I all seen what really happens good. when we touch weapons in here. One of us goes crazy. I disagree. I feel pretty great. Well, if you touch yeah, that scepter, you, you might not feel that great. Mm. I'm gonna um, test it with the rod, see good and evil, poison and, and magic, see if there's anything radiating. Yeah, you um, you definitely seem to be picking up auras of evil from within the room, um, pretty much just like all around. Uh, no poison or anything like that, and, um, see, the magic that you're picking up, yeah, you, I mean, you definitely seem to be picking up let's see how to <laughs> a little bit of magic radiating off of the throne area in general. <coughs> I'm not a big fan of this, guys. I don't see this not, I don't see this not ending without a... Something bad happening. Did you happen to see any treasure in there other than potentially from the uh, the scepter? Just lots of baby skulls and lots of things that are probably going to try to kill us. Let's keep moving on then. Yeah, this room could be a, a trap. Why don't we go downstairs and then on the way back up? This whole fucking place is a trap. That is a yeah, fair That's true. I want let's just, to set Let's just kind of slink back out. I'm, I'm going to close the door again with, with Solrak, like, in the way. <laughs> I'm gonna... ignore the craving now to see what the hell happens if I grab the scepter. But after we go downstairs, I want to go back for it. Let's go. And I keep walking. 
Let's close the door behind you as the blind artists continue painting their murals of macabre, scenes of things that you guys have experienced thus far within the tomb. And as you continue onwards, you go downstairs. Yes. Yeah. They're not going to go back up. We're going to go down. <laughs> Alrighty. You guys continue on downwards. And as you follow this, this spiral stairs downwards, it seems to elongate outwards. Just to <laughs> curve around about 15 more feet to a long straight path down into a darkness. And as you walk down the stairs a bit further, a little bit of light, some light. green aura <laughs> seems to emanate from beyond the passage of the stairs. Not sure why you can see the full room, but yes. You guys are up in the stairs right now. And you can continue on moving if you'd like. Like? Yep. Wow. You see the kind of green stuff? Yeah, you see like kind of the green smoke kind of like billowing upwards out a little bit. Gonna detect uh, poison. Yeah, you can. Gonna kind of like hold Soul Rack back a second. Um, yeah, as you go ahead and uh, detect poison down wow. here. Um, let's see, you're going all the way down there? Yeah, you seem to be- Well, I'm like, up, yeah. Yeah, you seem to be picking up a, maybe a little bit of poison within the area. Um, but it doesn't seem like necessarily uh, the gas or the smoke that it seems to be building upwards. It's not like an elemental, environmental kind of thing. Detect magic and evil, just the whole nine yards, sure. nothing. Um, yes, yeah, you go ahead and do all of your stuff. Um, don't seem to be picking up any sort of evil. Let's see, as far as magic goes. Yeah, there, there's some magic that you're getting in here, some uh, sort of like evocation magic. Well, gentlemen, it's, uh, I think the air's okay, but just uh, mind where you step. Mm. I guess I'll kind of... So no poison? The air's not poison, but uh, there's, there's definitely something here. If you guys want, you guys can stay up while I uh, kind of scope it out. Yeah, you can walk on the ceiling. Uh, Chanton, why don't you just use your broom? No, oh, I'm, I'm immune to uh, poison. Oh. Well, I definitely vote he goes in then. Creature or disease. Yeah, basically, there, there there could be a poisonous creature in here, so keep out for uh, totally not spiders. Um, but let's just right. be prepared. I'm going to... <laughs> As he walks in, I'm going to cast a guidance on him just to. <laughs> and I'll stand behind Chattington. Uh, keeping an eye on Fang. If something attacks him, I can go in and. Yeah, I'm going to pop on my broom. Zip, zap, zoop. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to be climbing like on the walls, just kind of scoping out the jaunt. As you begin to go on in there, uh, green smoke, as you guys can see, Bill is out from this bronze cauldron in the middle of this. A 20 foot high vaulted hall uh, it's barely visible you know through the haze and everything but you can see uh, there are three rocking chairs uh, several workbenches heaped with all sorts of haberdashery and a spinning wheel and a rusty iron cage um, to the left containing a prisoner uh, you can see galleries stand 10 feet above the floor to either side of the room as well um, as stairs extend upwards or ascend upwards to um, another level He said prisoner. Is, is he dead? Um, go approach and find out. It's in this well, cage to the that. left. <laughs> nah, that's not my problem. 
<laughs> he he got in there. He, if he really wants to get out, he can uh, figure it out. That's we're on our own mission here. I don't really care about the prisoner either, but I secretly judge Fang since he's a a priest, so he should care. Fang, as, as you go that. along up here as well, you can see the doors up here uh, all seem to have different symbols on them. The doors have the different symbols? They do. Okay. Uh, you can see the one that you started with in the top right corner has a symbol of like a square on this door. The one that you're next to right now has an octagon on it. Gents, remember those uh, shapes that we uh, got from the uh, the the undead creature? <coughs> you know, I have the square. I believe uh, Changton has a pentagon. Yes. I'm Is wondering if that has any sort of significance to this right here. That is a good question. Let's um. um I'm gonna I'm gonna walk into the room. Maybe try uh, squaring up the square. As Wilmer begins to walk into the room here and gets a little bit closer to that caged area, um, you can see coming out of the smoke, three tiny figures begin to waddle towards you, you know, through this smoky, smoky haze. And you see a straw doll with a rusty pin sticking into its body, a, a faceless child molded from clay. Um, you can see a stuffed monkey with its lower body, a unicycle. And as they approach you, kind of waddling their way over towards you through the haze, the straw doll looks up at you and says, You need to run away. The Stone Sisters will be back any moment now. You know, we may want to listen to this, guys. <coughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a little scared and I jump back. Wait, who are, are you? The Stone Sisters. I'm I'm Straw Bundle, and this is a uh, Clay No Face, and, and this is and, who are the sisters? and Joho the Monkey. This the Sewn Sisters are oh they are terrible terrible women. They're these three three witches. These night hags. Wait 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 wait. Did you say that's Joho the Monkey? That is. You see Joho just kind of claps his symbols together. He goes. Bleh. <laughs> he tries to speak as a little cotton ball just comes out of his mouth. I uh, literally ignore everything that he's saying, and I'm going to very carefully make my way over there, and I'm going to free them. <laughs> uh, so they're not in the cage. They they walked freely over towards Wilmore as he's kind of just started walking in here. But Wilmore, you do see a figure in the cage. Um, I don't know if you look over at it, like kind of intently at, or not, but yeah, you do see I was, I was initially going towards the cage. Yeah, so, so Wilmer, as you begin to walk towards the cage and like these figures come out, you're kind of caught off guard, you know, coming both ways because you see this figure in the cage um, kind of curled up, uh, half naked, he's barely got a cloth covering over his body, but he's got hair covering over his shoulders, big, broad, muscled shoulders with a big, burly beard, and, uh, you know, brown's hair kind of slicked back, and he's kind of just hunched over in this cage, and kind of turns his head over to the mo for a moment, and you swear that this is Solrak within the cage there. He kind of turns around and notices you guys and grabs through the bars of the cage and says, Wilmore! Wilmore! Is that you? Help me! Free me! Get me out of here! Kind of look back at Solrak and just, what the fuck, guys? <coughs> can I see this as well? Or you can only hear Wilmore? You can hear that now. You know, you're just kind of standing at the stairs. A little bit of smoke is kind of covering, obscuring your view, but you would hear that and of course Wilmore would be asking you this and Get a little bit closer if you'd like and see. Yeah, I'm gonna get down here and uh, when I see them, I'm gonna ask the figurines, "What the hell is going on here?" And I point to him. I, 
the the hags they they've been they've been torturing this uh, they call him the Guki Likey. I don't I don't know I don't know what the deal is with him. Uh, we've just been we've been kind of just helping uh, nurse him and, and whatnot, helping him a little bit. I don't know what he is though. He, has has he always looked like this? <laughs> sometimes he looks like this, and sometimes he he looks like. And kind of turns her head for a moment. Well, looks like him too, and points up to Fang, up standing up at the top, and, uh, and uh, bald head and tattoos on his face, and really, really skinny and tall. Great calves. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> like not really paying attention to them. And who are these sisters? You were explaining. I interrupted. Of a Try not to speak too too loudly of them. I, they're terrible. They're terrible. They're they're trying to help whatever's beyond the room over there. Trying to raise it to, to they say become a, the next god. Next god is which room? Yeah, over there. She points over her shoulders, and you guys can see just barely. You know, this room is pretty obscure, but you can see a, a green door on the south side. I see it. And I look back to the figurines. Why are you here? Well, we weren't always like this. We were. Wait. You know you. You look familiar, but she looks over there. Maybe that's why, but we were children <laughs> once. Uh, we came from the town of Daggerford and had our souls put into these, these, these beings, these bodies. Uh, I look at Chattington, and I don't know if this is another trap, like uh, before with the skull. So I'm, I'm kind of hesitant to answer them, but you can make an insight check if you want. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Uh, come on, insight. Oh, nice. Yeah, you just se seem very trustworthy, little dolls and creepy little, <laughs> you know, made up voodoo things to you. But yeah. uh, outside of that, real quick, guys, uh, Fang is up there um looking around you don't seem to see like any sort of uh you know nodules or anything that would match up along with the skulls you just see the symbol that's up there on the doors gents what's the first one of the first things they told us about this place it's not to trust anyone in here that is a fair statement my friend the second thing I can't seem to find any notches of where like, <laughs> shapes might go into the door. I'm wondering if it has anything to do with the cauldron in the center. I mean, all I know is 2 plus 2 equals 4. And there's a green door on the south side. Why don't you try to check it out? With the, the door or the cauldron? Probably get a good eye on the cauldron. Especially if these sisters are coming, and I'm gonna kinda like listen out to, to see if I hear anything or if there's any like place where I think they would come from. Now, what's the other shape that we're missing? You can see that there are three other doors on the opposite side of the hall. Of like, you know, you're up on another level from everyone. 21. On the other balcony on the other side, you can see there are three other doors. You can't see the symbols on them from where you are, but... Um, with a 21, yeah, you, you're listening out. You don't seem to hear anything that's coming in or, you know, making an approach to you or anything. But the creature in the cage says, Please, please, you have to help me, Wilmore! Why would I help the doppelganger? I'm... I, I'm Solrak! What are you talking about? This is the real me! The real Solrak! They just told me that... Now. I'm gonna smell that the other Sorak to see if he smells like me or if he smells like an imposter. Yeah, go ahead and make a perception check. Get a load of this, Chattington. Real Sorak is smelling the fake Sorak to see if he's real or not. 
That sounds like a fun like smell. Fun. <coughs> 15. You guys are simply He's wasting your times with e this shit. Equally as stinky. S smells just like Solrak. Well, Solrak, is he the real one or the fake one? Smells just like me. No shit. No, it's all shit. Yes, it is. <laughs> and I kind of point at the what I'm assuming is a doppelganger, and I kind of go, I'm sitting here wondering what you did to the yellow banner. I, I don't know what you're speaking of. Wilmer, it's me. No, I don't believe you, my friend. I'm going to step up to it. If you're you, then who the hell am I? While I'm on the top balcony, I take the uh, the skull head that I have with the shape of... I believe I have this. <coughs> Let me double check. Uh, yes, I have the square. And, like, I'm on the top, and I see the cauldron down below. And I'm just like... I try to shoot it. In from the top, just go buckets. Okay, you're throwing <laughs> the skull into the cauldron. Yeah. All right, go ahead and make a uh, make a sleight of hand or just dexterity check. Either one you want to do. Make a Kobe check. <laughs> oh, seven. It's kind of bricks off the, the whip of it and just kind of bounce off and rolls around the ground a bit. Uh, and I'm rolling towards Wilmer and Solrek. Hey, get my rebound down there. I, uh... <laughs> uh, as, that, as that kind of rolls around in front of you guys, um, the straw um, voodoo doll like creature, straw bundle, she says, Oh, so you guys have found some of the skulls. Yeah, I've seen that you, you need that to, to open up the door down there. Uh, and I look back at the guys. <laughs> upstairs. It looks like we may have to find the other ones. Now, when are these sisters... I look back at the figurines. When are these sisters coming back? Do you know? <sighs> or where they went? It could be any moment. They, they travel in and out of the, the plains at will. Wait a minute, that's a door to a different plane? Oh, no, no, that's not the way that they traveled. There, beyond that door is some sort of terrible creature that they're trying to nurse to become a god, but no, they, they travel <coughs> just like that, disappearing and reappearing out of the mist. I think uh, if, if, if we're going to get... I think that's the soul monger, guys, and we may not be ready for him yet. We still, uh, well, we still got to go back and get the rest of the skull heads, and then, um, ideally, we see if we can find that, uh, that dark dagger and maybe get our friend here back. And I, and I kind of shake the uh, princess, and then I look over to the doppelganger and go, <coughs> Although, I don't know if I trust him. Still just grabbing the cage and looking at you guys. Please, I beg of you. Jackson, oh, yeah. you, you getting any uh, bad vibes from him? Well, I mean, probably. I'm, I'm gonna, I'll pull the rod out and <coughs> smack it around him for a little bit. Yeah, you don't pick up any evil radiating off of him. No magic or. Um. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you would pick up some sort of magic, but it's kind of like muddy, like what exactly the school of magic is. You can make an Arcana check if you'd want. An Arcana check. <coughs> Sixteen. Sixteen? Um, you can look over the body and everything, and I mean, this looks like a 
spitting image of Soul Rack, like an exact replica. You know, a bit rough. Definitely, you know, looks a little beat up as he's laying under this or on this blood-stained blanket in this rusty cage. Um, but it, it's not not a perfect co copy. A little bit scrawnier than than the normal Soul Rack, but he looks pretty. You know, not like a doppelganger. Like this looks like like a well-made clone. And um, you know, it seems like there would probably be some sort of magical link between um, this clone and even uh, possibly the, whoever created it, and possibly even who it is a creation of. As for whatever reason, they seem to you know know about you guys and, and about Solrak. I go. Um... Hold out your hand, <laughs> soul rack number two. Uh, I'm gonna assume he does that. Oh, he's <coughs> uh, me, me, okay. I was just waiting for him to do it. Okay. <laughs> I'm not number two, you're number two, asshole. So hold that I'm gonna hand. I'm going to grab him by the wrist and just kinda look at him weird. I'm gonna pull my dagger out and I'm gonna cut him across the palm of his hand. Ah, you're holding his hand as it kind of bleeds out, and it looks like normal blood comes out, dripping out of his hand. Kind of look at Soul Rack. You feeling okay, buddy? Soul Rack number one. Feeling okay? Yeah, you feel fine. Yeah. I mean, if you don't think he's evil, and he is like me. It'd be pretty helpful to have a second one of me around. Didn't the dolls say that it takes on the uh, the formation of myself as well? Yeah, I mean, every every great thing has a downfall, but for the most part, it's pretty cool to have another one of me. Yeah, but why does it change between you and me? I look back at number two. Well... I don't know what you're talking of or what these dolls are speaking of. I, just, uh, I, I feel like I'm going crazy. I am Solrak. Do you guys not hear me? <laughs> yeah, but I'm Solrak, buddy. You see how this doesn't work? <laughs> See, I'm just kind of like just white knuckling the cage. I mean, he just literally looks like he's like losing his mind. Doesn't know what's going on. I'm losing my mind watching this bullshit. We've got to find the other shapes to get past this door. Okay, so if anything, we have got to backtrack to find the other skeletons. <coughs> I agree. But... I mean, if, uh... Wilmore did not detect any evil... I can't he's, let myself stay in a cage. He's clearly a doppelganger, my friend. And we were warned about this already. Well, Thorek, what more do you have to do? You let out the little girl in the in the in the in the, uh, in the cube. You've got to stop trusting everything inside this fucking cave. I don't trust everything. No, but I do trust me. Can we please just go? Uh, All right, that's it. I think we'll. I fly we'll down. We'll be back, friends. And I just start walking up the stairs. I've had enough of this shit, Sorak. <clears throat> As he goes up, I ask myself, "You have thirty seconds. What happened to you, and why are you in this cage?" I don't know who you are or why you look just like me. I swear, I am Solrak, son of Ju of uh, Angrieve, son. I'm supposed to be the true kin of Daggerford right now. This is... What is happening? You see, he truly looks like he means every word he is saying. And he said son of Gillum? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, uh... I ask him... Something that 
Maybe I, only he, we would know. Tell me. The night that it all went to shit. Who was the bastard that tried to kill us? It, it was... It was Uncle Rubius. What do you... What do you expect? I mean... It was him. It, it was all him all along. He took so the throne. Mad. He's a doppelganger, my friend. Maybe once we come back with everything we need and <coughs> we destroy this temple, maybe we can let him go then. I mean, there's only one soul rack. And anything else is a danger. Uh, I'm gonna turn. I'm gonna turn around and uh, leave with the guys. You guys, all turn all right. around. And begin ascending back up the stairs. Then, uh, in search of some other skulls, the shapes protruding from their heads. You know now that there is five doors with symbols on them. You have two skulls with symbols. <coughs> potential three other skulls that you're looking for. As you guys continue going upward, do you go up to that level above you? Do you stay at this level or do you continue going up? Or what level do you guys plan on going to? So I can put you there. The I one think with our skull hallway. Thing. Throne room. So we're just going up one level. Yeah, maybe we should... Um, I think we should maybe poke around here a little bit, but but we should stay away from the uh, from the throne and the scepter. I think we're all good playing with the gods. <coughs> yeah, and something tells me that, that could be grabbing that scepter could also set off maybe something else, not just a god. Shaddington, the first skull that you, or the first um, 